if we pull on the invisible thread, we can see tarot. Like all true things, it's tied to every aspect of our lives. From the music that we love to the movies we watch and even the people we know. Tarot is everywhere and everything. Welcome to the invisible thread. Yeah, exactly. It's a but then again, I get triggered into wands. I get triggered into. I'm more. I I I'm I get triggered into wands like crazy. You know. Well, those cups are pretty full too. You do yeah. have a moon, right? You have a moon and a water sign. A water moon is very cuppy. Yeah, I do cry. I'm a crier. <laughs> <laughs> It, 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 really, that it, was it's, very King of Swordsy. You're like, yes, I do cry. <laughs> <laughs> it's that salty discharge from my eye. It has happened. <laughs> so <laughs> did you pick a song for our queen? I did. I picked the song Living Proof by Cat Power. And it's occurring to me now that Sean Marshall, who is Cat Power, is an Aquarius woman. It's not your face. I mean, I knew she was, but I didn't when I when the song came to me. So it makes sense why she would have that perspective. Let me just see. I do have the lyrics here. It's actually it was the opening lyrics that got to me. It says, it's not the face or the color of your hair or the sound of your voice, my dear, that's got me dragged in here. It's the ice in the seam. It's the scheme of you. You're supposed to have the answer. You're supposed to have living proof. And that's very Queen of Swords-y to me. Just that whole statement, right? Because she's not the type where charm is going to work. She's not the type where money and flash is going to work. It has to be that stuff. She says the ice in your seams, right? Yeah. What keeps you together? What? Who are you that way? That is a good. Th that was a really good pick. When when I listened to it, I was like, "Oh yeah, that is total Queenie Swordsy." Yeah, and I love how over and over again in the song later on, she keeps saying, "You're supposed to have the answer. You're supposed to be living proof." Now we could say that's the Queen of Swords talking to herself. I think it is because hmm. that's the other thing with the air signs. Well, they take that pride in their intellect, and I say that they always want to be the smartest person in the room. They expect that of themselves. So it's actually an expectation that they have to live up to in their own minds. Yeah, because they would expect nothing less. That's right. So what Now, is it was kind of tough like? for me to pick my song because... I mean, when you think about it, what, and if, hey, anybody listening, if in the replies or whatever you can do, um, if you have a King of Swords song, please uh, let us know what you think. But I came up with a song called You Gotta Stand for Something. Oh, it's and perfect. It's, it's by Aaron Tippin. And uh, the lyric that got me is, you gotta stand for something or you're gonna fall for anything. Say you got to stand for something. You'll fall for anything You've got to be your own man Not a puppet on a string Never compromise what's right And uphold your family name You've got to stand for something Or you'll fall for anything And to me so that... <laughs> Yeah, and, and it's and it's a mature aspect of it. Like we've discussed, it's like, uh, this is from what I know. It, it just had this sound advice element going on. Mm -hmm. I, lo I love that because I'll go into this more when we do the court cards as a collective group. But there is a progression in terms of the lessons you learn through each king phase before you can incorporate and become the emperor. First will come the King of Wands. 
Now, the King of Wands, very uh, quickly speaking, he is about ego and pride. So the first lesson we have to learn when we discover our own power is how it can be manipulated through pride and ego. And once you master that lesson, you can move through the King of Wands to next the King of Swords, the ability to discern when your ego is being manipulated or when you're using your ego to manipulate others for power. The King of Swords and the lyric in your song is very much that you've got to stand for something or you'll fall for anything. The King of Swords has learned to stand by his morals and his thoughts and his ideas, and they can't be manipulated like maybe the King of Wands could be. And in order to get what from self mastery, uh, understanding each suit, so they're they're like right after you get that King Queen Sword mastery, then you jump into Empress and Emperor vibe. Is that what you're saying? Well, yes, but it's not really exactly an arrival point, and that's the whole thing about life. You don't get there. It's a constant um, juggling of those energies. That's why I asked you, where does the Queen of Swords live, so that you can master that. Because then anything that comes your way experientially, you have the tool to handle, and you know how to call it up when you need to. Okay, this is my Queen of Swords moment. I'm going to let her handle this. Because, oh. like, if the Three of Swords comes up, I'm the Queen of Cups most of the time. I'm a double water sign. So if the Three of Swords comes up in my experience, I'm going to be devastated. I'm going to be on the ground crying. <laughs> but I do have that Queen of Swords capability if I know where she lives, right? So basically, for people listening, if you don't think you have split personalities, you do. <laughs> you do. <laughs> You do. And when we talk about self-mastery, it's all about the recognition of that and the ability to balance it. Self-mastery through tarot. That sounds really cool. Yeah. It's an amazing function of the tarot. So on that note, you had a couple questions that you wanted people to maybe take home after, you know, after they listen, some kind of homework. I did. Just give me a minute where I have those written down. Um, oh, well, the first question does kind of go along with what I was just saying, which is like for yourself, you can take a look at the court cards in your deck and really examine what those energies, first of all, mean for you. What, how is the Queen of Cups an expression in you? Is that your creativity? Is that your ability to love? That kind of thing. And then, you know, which one is your default personality? In which situations does that default come out to play? Like when and where in your life do they fall out of balance? Because they will. And then you're not at responding in full emperor empress energy anymore. You got to be cognitive of that. Yeah. So examining those energies and where they play a part in your reactions in your life is a good thing to do, I think. Again, if you know, you people, the podcast is to grow and to learn and also to be a better reader and also understand your readings. If you don't read and you're listening, this, this might help you out when you are listening to other readers and you want to know a little bit more about yourself by putting these into action yeah exactly understanding what motivates the energy behind these cards it, it goes a long way and helping to use the messages instead of just kind of feel like oh well i guess i'm screwed because the reader said this or the reader said that you can then if you understand the energies you can play with them to to create a different outcome that was really cool you did a really good job on these notes this week, by the way, Jordan. Thank you. <laughs> I mean, it's it's great. I, I hope people. I hope you have enjoyed this podcast. Um, it's probably as usual. We've talked an hour and a half, so it'll probably be broken down into three segments. <laughs> but um, if you want to listen to J Mac and her free readings are on YouTube, just go to Inward Eye Tarot and check it out. I mean, I think you're going to really dig it. So thank you. I'd love to hang out with everybody. The more energy, the better. 
Absolutely. I, I, I just love your stuff. So again, we and are what about so... where, where will we find your stuff? Oh, well, where can you find me? Workflow Tarot on YouTube. <laughs> What 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 would they what can they expect from workflow tarot? Well, it's what I said. It's exactly how do these energies how do they work for you? How do they actually apply to life? And how do they show in your daily reality? As opposed to the kind of more spiritual or higher, you know, philosophy of tarot. Yeah, I try to be I try to be down to earth, like a uh, an Italian grandfather <laughs> you need a you want me to tell you the secret to life it's food <laughs> and wine that's <laughs> <No>, true <laughs> <laughs> life is beautiful remember that no but anyway we are so grateful you you're listening i hope you're enjoying this please uh like share or whatever you do on this stuff so again i'm grateful yeah don't forget to let us know how any of this works for you if you try it out if you experiment with those energies and what it means to you, it's so fun to see how it plays out. Thanks, well, you guys. You're awesome. We'll talk to you later. The path is inside you, and it's always just beginning. We are forever grateful to share in the exploration with you. We'll see you soon. Thank you for listening to Self Mastery the practical art of tarot and astrology.